May God be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship here at Mount Olivet Lutheran Church of Plymouth. Um, it is wonderful to see your face for all those who are here in the sanctuary and for those online. Good morning to you as well, wherever um, this time finds you, if you are at home or uh, traveling or out and about, whatever it is. Um, we are in these ordinary days of summer, this long season, and uh, we see growth. We have the color green and grateful for some rain finally. Um, I was traveling in northern Minnesota and saw um, a lot of places that were parched, and so um, maybe that is with us too. And as we begin our service today, uh, we just come as we are, and here's the promise that God promises to meet us where we are, and I'm looking forward to worship today. We're dwelling in Psalm 69, and Pastor Kristen has a word there for us. Uh, once again, uh, the Psalms are ancient prayers, um, many different forms, and Pastor Kristen tells me that Psalm 69 is more of a lament song psalm so uh for all those different shades of where we come today god promises to be there so we begin by uh confessing naming the truth about uh things in our lives and our role in this world and god's love that finds us right there blessed be the holy trinity one god who greets us in this and every season whose word never fails whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned. We have hurt our community. We have squandered your blessings and hoarded your bounty. We have failed to be honest. We have lacked the courage to speak and have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst and offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand as you are able and we sing together.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who will offer their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and, de and defend us, gracious Lord. Pray together, merciful God, you teach us that there will be conflict in love. When we experience pain, help us speak our truth, ask for your help, and receive your peace as an invitation to new life. Amen. You may be seated. Morning. Martin Luther, in his German translation of the Psalms, introduced them this way. The book of Psalms may well be called a little Bible, for in it is comprehended most beautifully and briefly everything, everything that is in the entire Bible. How about that? We don't often read the appointed psalm for the day as part of worship at Mount Olivet, so I thought I would shake things up a bit this morning. 
The psalm we will read from today, Psalm 69, takes on a particular form, as Pastor Beth said. It's a lament uh, psalm. It's a prayer in a time of trouble, and it's printed in your bulletin, and it'll be on, on the screen as well for people online. The writer of this psalm wrote this prayer to express their pain and sorrow to God. That much we know. The specifics of their situation are not known. And it's probably not for us to speculate, but rather to experience this prayer, this lament, in relation to our own lives and our own times of trouble. And that's why this morning I'd like to draw us into a devotional way to hear and experience the Word of God, and I'm going to call it, I Notice and I Wonder. So in a minute, we will read from Psalm 69, and as we read along together, pay attention to what you notice. Maybe this psalm is familiar to you, but maybe you are reading it and hearing it for the first time, like I was earlier this week. Either way, listen for what you notice in the writer's complaint and the conflict, the cry for help, the trust placed in God. And second, what do you wonder about? What stands out to you and resonates with you or challenges you today? So now I invite you to join me in reading the psalm responsively, and Kira will put that on the screen. Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I am weary with my crying, my throat is parched, my eyes grow dim with waiting for my God. I have become a stranger to my kindred, an alien to my mother's children. When I humbled my soul with fasting, they insulted me for doing so. I am the subject of gossip for those who sit in the gate and the drunkards make songs about me. With your faithful help, rescue me from sinking in the mire. Let me de be delivered from my enemies and from the deep waters. Answer me, O Lord, for your steadfast love is good. According to your abundant mercy, turn to me. Draw near to me, redeem me, set me free because of my enemies. Amen. I wonder what you noticed and what you wondered about as you read along. I notice and I wonder. I notice that the writer of this psalm uses the imagery of being in water. But what seems to be at stake is a lot more than getting wet when you don't want to be wet. I notice that the waters are deep and chaotic and aggressive, and that the writer doesn't seem to be able to pull themselves out on their own. I notice that the situation, whatever it is, is dire, and I wonder 
do we really notice when people are up to their necks in deep water? Do we see the pain in our family members and friends and acquaintances, in our kids, in our elders, in our black, brown, and indigenous neighbors, in LGBTQ communities? Do we see the pain? What prevents us from seeing those among us who are up to their necks in the deep waters? Our busy schedules, fear that we are not qualified to help or that we would overextend ourselves in some way, fear that we too could be taken down and overwhelmed by the deep waters. I notice and I wonder I notice that whoever wrote this prayer has been shamed because of their devotion to God. Innocent and righteous before God, the writer is humiliated in all of the places at home, maybe at the temple, at the city gate. Everyone, family, friends, community has deserted them. Pain has been caused by insults and gossip and even a mocking song. As Christians in the United States in the 21st century, we may not be able to identify with religious persecution, but we can probably remember a time or times when we felt humiliated, when we were insulted, or when we felt unsafe and didn't know where to turn. I wonder if you can locate a time in your life when you can identify with the brokenness of this writer, of this prayer. Was it hard to complain to God with honesty or to request God's help openly like the writer of this psalm? Is it hard to believe that expressing your grief to God can be as faithful a practice as praising God. I notice and I wonder. I notice that although this obscure psalm was written perhaps over 3,000 years ago, we can still probably connect to it each in our own way on a random Sunday at the end of June in 2023 which is a stunning observation in and of itself. And I wonder if and when and how a young Jesus, some 1,000 years later, learning as he did in the synagogue, read or received this very psalm. I wonder if it influenced him and his ministry. I wonder if it was a balm in times of conflict and despair. The gospel writers seem to think so because a connection to this psalm is made in many stories about Jesus. First, when Jesus chased the money changers out of the temple, you may remember that one. Then when Jesus tells his disciples that in following him they will experience hatred and pain. And finally, when Jesus is near death on the cross and thirsty and offered sour wine. See, Jesus knew that conflict was going to be part of following in his way of love. And those who lived at the time of Jesus connected with psalms like the one we just read to plead for God's help in very difficult situations. I notice and I wonder. I notice that when the writer of this psalm cries for help, God does not appear to answer, at least in the way expected. And yet the writer is undeterred, undeterred, pleading again and again, answer me, rescue me, deliver me, turn to me. Do not hide your face from me. Draw near to me. Redeem me. Set me free. And so I wonder what prayers weigh heavily on your hearts today. 
Can you identify with this writer when they suggest that God has taken too long to answer their prayers? What kind of persistence does it take to continue to lay your prayers at God's feet? I notice and I wonder. I notice that in their persistence and cries for God's help, the writer of this psalm still has hope. If you think about it, without hope in the abundance and the mercy of God, this psalm would not even exist. It only exists because of the writer's hope that despite their suffering, despite God's slowness to respond, God indeed can be moved. I wonder if in whatever is weighing heavy on our hearts, if like the writer of this psalm, you and I can still locate that small hope that God can be moved, that God is moving even when we can't comprehend it. I wonder if that still small hope is enough faith for today. For the word of God that continues to live and breathe among us, we notice, we wonder, and we give thanks. Amen. Please stand as we sing. Sing just three verses of this hymn. We now confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now may the peace of God be with you all. We uh, here at church will share peace. If you are online, please type peace in the comments and we will connect with you there. Hi. may be seated and as we continue with the offering uh, we have a basket up front kids all your coins and dollars go to feed hungry people we have a venmo code and an offering box in the back as well so we continue now with the offering Blake. We pray over our offering. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that all may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.
It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this. For the remembrance of me gathered by god's spirit among us uh, we pray the prayer that jesus taught us our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. However you come in today, whether you feel like you're up in your neck to your neck in water, or you feel a little bit more free, um, there is a place for you at this table. And for the psalmist who has spoken this prayer, and for so many who have, answer me, O Lord, for your steadfast love is good. According to your abundant mercy, turn to me. And God has turned to us in the world through Jesus and this meal. So not only is God close, but God feeds you. Just this little bit of bread and this little sip today is enough for faith to be nurtured and grow. And know that gift is for you. Um, if you are online, hear these words wherever you are today. The body of Christ is given for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you. For us here at church, no, um, this is full participation. Um, kids and adults are welcome to God's table to receive God's grace, and the wine is darker in color. Grape juice is around the rim, and that's lighter, and the wafers are gluten-free. Please come forward now. This feast is prepared.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. And so now we pray here at Mount Olivet, the prayers of the people include all of us. So if you are online and have a prayer, feel free to type that in the comments and I will read that uh, just momentarily. For those here at church, simply raise your hand. Um, and what we have found, um, just as we speak today, when we name uh, the places we are calling God to be, uh, we join voices of thousands of years, and oftentimes what someone else is praying for is exactly what's on our heart, or we realize we have something to offer. And it's just a reminder that we are called to do this life together. And it just may be that you are offering hope to someone who so needs it today. And so I'll start us off, and then um, I will look to us as a community to speak our prayers to God today. Let's pray. Um, God, for words, when we have no words, um, when it all feels like too much, and uh, we are needing more action and instead get silence, um, when we are hoping for a change and we wake up the next day feeling the same, God, um, remind us, help us notice and wonder all the ways that you're working that we can't see at this moment. Help us know that just a sip and a taste of hope is enough for today. And God, help us know that we all have a part in making your world um, full of life and wholeness and goodness. Help us notice people who are suffering to not go by too quickly to stop and pause and offer what we have. And mostly, God, hear the prayers of your people, God, and respond in your abundant love and mercy. God of mercy, hear our prayer. What prayers do you have today? Yeah, Vani. Yeah. Yeah, rain on us, oh God, um, just uh, for the drought among us and the dryness and um, just to have it pour down um, in all those ways. Uh, help us not take advantage um, or forget just the basic needs, especially those who make their livelihood um, in farming and in other areas uh, where that rainwater is so needed um, to be alive. God of mercy. Yeah, Kristen.
I'm going to repeat that. I don't know if your mic was on or not. Um, Pastor Christian, a prayer of thanksgiving uh, for our funeral team. And Joy Miller, uh, Juanita Hoff's funeral was yesterday, and for all the ways that this community um, just welcomes and nourish and tend, especially in our time of grief. Um, God, for this specific gift uh, this week, we are so grateful. God, in your mercy. All right, friends online, I'm coming to you if you have prayers today. And uh, for all of us, whatever you're holding on your heart today, um, for this time to be um, a time for you to hear again that God is up to something in your life and up to something in the world and why we are a church as we are called together uh, to be able to have impact. And that is not when streets are easy. Um, that is most oftentimes when things are hard. And so uh, for all of us and the gifts that we bring to be a part of that collective mercy and action, comfort and hope in the world, we pray. Amen. Um, in terms of announcements today, um, I, I know uh, some of you are visiting Mount Olivet today, and we're sure glad that you are here. Um, I always say the best way uh, to get to know us is to worship with us, uh, both here at 9 o'clock. We also have a service at 1045. Um, uh, but for you to feel welcomed and uh, experience the Spirit of God in your life, we're just so glad you're a part of it. And I would love to introduce my colleague, Pace Warfield May, who leads uh, Children and Family Ministries. And Pace, you're going to give us a little glimpse of something you're up to. Yep. So, uh, good morning, everyone. How are you all today? Uh, so, two quick announcements about all the cool stuff going on for families with young children. Uh, so the first one is our Adults and Babies Connect, which uh, the first meeting of that was today at 9.45 to 10.40, so it's okay if you missed it. However, if you want to learn more about this, our next one is on July 16th, and we have Jenny Anderson who is going to be running that uh, in the worship center, so you can see her. She's wearing the lilac top, so if you want to say hello to her and learn more about that program, you can do so. And then I also want to say for those of you who have young kids here, uh, we, I would like to formally invite you to story time with Pace tonight. It's at 7.30. It's every Sunday now throughout the entirety of summer. And basically it's over Zoom. You can find the Zoom link on our website and you just show up in your pajamas with a stuffed animal and I'll read to you a, a children's storybook. Tonight's story is gritty and graceful about 15 inspiring stories of women in the Bible. So I'll be tonight's story and each week we read something fun and get a chance to talk about it and then send the kids off to sleep. So, and for a great start to the week, hopefully. So just want to appraise you all of those things and you can find out more about all of those things on our website. Pace. You know, a couple prayers popped in um, after I sent down that I want to read. Um, Ruth Broman, prayer of thanksgiving. It was four years ago yesterday that Ruth had open heart surgery. Um, and uh, she is giving thanks for all the medical care in her life. And Ruth, we're giving thanks for your life, uh, for all the ways that your heart has healed and your body um, and for your faith, that's a reminder uh, to us each and every day. And then Karen Anderson, prayers for my friend's daughter, Laura, who is midway through a surrogate pregnancy for her dear friend. Laura has two healthy children of her own, but this pregnancy has become more complicated with one of the twins dying in uterus. And um, for all the layers of that God, uh, for this birthing in the world and um, for bodies and cares and new life, for what we can control and what we can't. Uh, surround this dear family and this community with your love, um, God, your tender, tender love, we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand now and we sing as we close. <laughs>
receive this blessing. The God who calls out across the universe and yet speaks within the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, be held in love. Thanks be to God.